Hey folks, if you're out there, uh, we're going to be recording. Uh, let me just turn that down for a second. I wish I could turn it down in my ears as well. Something, something, something I need to fix there. We're going to be recording uh, 25 cents right away. And uh, I'm just playing the game that we played this week for a little bit here while Nick gets set up. Uh, the game is called... I forget what it's called. Enchanted World. It's a good little puzzle game. With lots of creaking sounds. I forget, I forget where this was. So you tap on the screen. Oh, I should tweet out. Uh, Twitch. General. Let's see. Is that sounding okay? Yes, that's the right microphone. Right speakers. Okay. You are good, I think. Yeah. Okay. Right now. Oops. Just going to tweet. I just had a little rant on Apple Podcasts on Twitter, so my our podcast probably won't get <laughs> uh, won't get any uh, appearances on Apple Podcasts anymore, and I might lose my Apple Arcade account. But <laughs> no, <laughs> <laughs> Apple will track you down and find you. Yeah. Um. Okay. Actually, I have the stream going already. I think. They can hear you, but they can't see you. Okay. Um, and just I was trying out how well Ecamm did actually at showing what the game is doing, like if I was streaming the game. Oh, but that's you, cool. Yeah, it would make it hard for you to, <laughs> you can't see it or hear it, I guess. Yeah. Uh, unless I open the Twitch stream. Yeah. And then you might sort of have Twitch inception or something, I guess. <laughs> Gets kind of messy, but. Yeah, it's, a, it's an argument for what, like multiple devices. So you're not like, you've got the thing you're viewing on. Yeah, like an iPad or something beside you just to. Yeah. You know, with sound off, et cetera. And yeah, or I guess a mul massive monitor with, without having a. Okay. I forget where I got into with this puzzle. <laughs> oh. oh, this is that one. Okay. Oh, yeah. I remember these levels. Yeah, the... Uh, here, I wonder if I can put... Can I put your little picture bubble? Oh, there we go. It's a little awkward. Side-by-side -side heads in the bottom corner on the stream. <laughs> oh, it's muted. Oh, yeah. And I look taller because, let's see. Yeah, we need to like... <laughs> I'm gigantic and you're tiny. Something like that. We don't need that much headroom. Yeah. Is yours, uh, yours is embedded, or like webcam in the laptop yes that's what i'm using yeah it's a little it's it's the the fast and easy way mm -hmm. 
So for anybody who's watching right now, there's, there's just one person, it's probably just you, but anybody who watches this later, this is the game we're talking about. We won't be playing it during the podcast, but I uh, just thought I'd include a little bit of the, the game in the in the uh, stream, anyways, for the video version. And it kind of operates on this basic sort of puzzle, sliding puzzle pieces. Reminds me a lot of, like, Survivor puzzles. <laughs> uh, if you watch Survivor. I, I watched the very first season when it was like a huge event. Oh, yeah. Uh, our whole family did. Right, that's where I got up to. Okay, I'm going to stop this because we got to... I have a hard out. You have a... You have to go back to work. I have to go back to lunch. Uh, Skype chat. That way. There we go. Mute my phone. Make sure it doesn't blast anything. Okay, I'm going to hit record on audio hijack. Uh, before oh, I do, should I record on my end? Yeah, I might as well, just in case. All right. um, before I do, the game for next week. You we said we were going to do this before we... We'll just have an agreement what we're going to do rather than having and hawing live on stream. <laughs> um, right. Um, so yeah, so you you you're interested in the the new Royale one that came out that last week, I think. Well, I just I was trolling, scrolling, whatever the word is, through <laughs> randomly just to look for some stuff, and then yeah, the uh, that just caught my eye. But the reality is that um, I guess like any of the multiplayer stuff, like we keep kind of talking about, it's just like the difficulty in scheduling, which is sucks for like being adults i guess <laughs> yeah um anyways i what was the pilgrims pilgrims oh, is the samarost uh machinarium studio yeah. that so i i started that one um it'd be fun to put more time into it uh it's it's you know point and click um I got maybe through sort of the first area and then I, you know, I was, I wasn't figuring out which items to go on, uh, for the next puzzle I had to do. Um, and where, what is this? They're right behind you. Right. That was the endless runner one that came out the other oh, week, yeah. I think. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So I'd, I'd be up for either, uh, I think I think you're right that the Royale one, while fun, is probably a little harder to get a realistic play scenario for for us right now. Yeah, and there's single player offline against bots, and then yeah, it's safe for kids age nine plus to play without parental supervision. <laughs> what is a seven year old going to see that in that game? But I guess maybe just fighting or something. There's probably some age that's for that butter royale one i switched recently from um uh, been trying Using instead of using Google, using DuckDuckGo, just on my desktop browser, anyways. Um, mm -hmm. But it's funny how it, it works. Like ninety percent of the time, no problem. But then the few times where you're just like, like, so searching for they're right behind you, Apple Arcade, nothing. It's just like it's like I'm it, <laughs> it's like nobody. I'm the first person to search for it on on DuckDuckGo, and so then. They have no, I don't know, something. <laughs> it's just a weird one. Yeah, I, I've, I've been using DuckDuckGo for a few years and um, on both mobile and, and desktop. And basically, uh, the it just doesn't work for m m like complicated multi-token searches. So like pretty much if I have a programming query where I'm, I'm like pasting in an error message to try and figure out what's wrong, yeah. I, I have to use the little bang G to send it to Google. Uh, it just, they just, however, their indexing just isn't quite at the same the same level. But for for basic stuff, it works great. Yeah, yeah. There's uh, why is it okay now on Google? Is it actually called they're not they're right behind you? Is that what it was? I thought why it is was. That not? I didn't download it to my phone when I saw it. I should just start keep doing that. 
because I keep thinking I'll Or is it the Kings of the Castle one that you that was the one that came out last week? And I didn't realize the the Jumper John one that also looks like a platformer, but is actually more of an endless runner. Mm. Okay, let's go tag Apple Arcade Guide. Related articles. King of the Castle. No Way Home. Doomsday Vault. Yeah, I don't see it there right behind you. Where did that come from? <laughs> Are you on, uh, I keep meaning to ask you about this too. Are you on Apple or are you on Catalina on a Mac yet? Or are you still one back? Uh, uh, my, my wife's laptop is, uh, but my, um, my iMac, I haven't moved for a couple different reasons. Uh, one of which is I upgraded sheep saver, which is my old, uh, power PC emulator. And it, <laughs> Bork something with my like Mac OS nine image. So I have to fix that. And then I just have a deep steam library, most of which isn't getting updated. Yeah. And so I'm trying to decide if I'm like, you know what, I'm just not going to go back to those or I could dual boot into windows and get them that way. So I just haven't decided what to do with it yet. Um, lot, lots of old incompatible applications. So I've, I've held off, but also that iMac is uh, head eight is is six and six plus years old now, and it was for when I was working from home full time. So mm. yeah, yeah, I, it might be might be time to think. You know, actually, we, we can talk we can talk about this on the on the <laughs> podcast maybe because uh, because I was thinking maybe I would just do a Mac Mini on the TV, and that would then be oh, Apple yeah. Arcade plus sort of home media server thing because I don't really need a a full computer at home. Yeah. Maybe we'll put that in the uh, topics to go back to Apple TV while waiting. Oops. Something like that. So we keep sort of circling around the Apple TV discussion every time and yeah. obviously nothing's happening. <laughs> oh, I forgot. I was going to check real quick if there's anything from the Apple earnings call about arcade yeah i don't think there was let's see but um even the what was it, apple tv plus signups and stuff they didn't really say anything there either yeah they usually don't uh break much out let me just glance real quick see if there's anything interesting to say uh, all-time record first quarter. Oh, wait, where's... Uh, I need to just quick see if Snell's... Yeah, that's what I was just reading. <laughs> but he doesn't have... He doesn't mention Arcade at all in his... Like, I just did a right. search for it. I, I'm so, not surprised because they're always very vague about... I mean, they're like, we're very happy with our services or whatever. Yeah. All right. And Apple so TV maybe Plus not is immaterial much. to their results even, which despite the fact that they're spending millions on it, obviously, um, they don't have any, anything to say in terms of how many people are using it or watching or, yeah. So an Apple Arcade, I'm yeah. sure, is a much smaller blip on their <laughs> bottom line than Apple TV in terms of both positive and negative. So I would imagine so. All right, I think I've, uh, wait, oh yeah, I was going to check. Yeah, I'm, I'm good to go, I think. Okay. Oh yeah, I'll hit record before I forget. Doot. So if you're out there watching, uh, we're just going to record a podcast right now. And uh, feel free to throw a comment in while we record. We might notice it and get to it, or it might not make sense, and we'll cover it when we finish recording, which is usually hopefully 25 to 35 minutes. If all goes according to plan and technology behaves. 
and I keep wanting to hit the music, but we don't hit the music first, Chris, someday. <laughs> <laughs> someday I'll get that. Okay. Hello and welcome to 25 Cents, an Apple Arcade podcast. I'm Chris. And I'm Nick. Each episode we'll be talking about the Apple Arcade games we've tried, what we keep going back to, what we think might be great games to check out if you've got kids, and preview upcoming games. You can find us wherever you listen to podcasts or on the web at goodstuff.fm. I always imagine there's somebody who's like, because on the edit version, I think I put the the beginning stuff as you're, or as I'm wrapping up, I guess, or whatever. And But the live stream, I never want to cut us off because it sounds confusing. But uh, some someone listening who's like really particular about podcasts, like noticing that kind of stuff. I, I wish, I want I want that kind of listener if you're out there. Yeah, we, we need that listener feedback. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which you can give to us at twitter.com slash 25C Arcade. Um, how are you doing, Nick? I'm good. It's been a busy couple of weeks, but, uh, you know, it's, uh, the, the signs of, of spring are starting to show up here a tiny bit. I, I imagine it's a little colder where you are, but I heard some birds the other morning. So that's, uh, yeah, the sunset is after 5 PM again. Yeah. Yeah. Those are the, te- yeah, it's, it feels like the long dark winter is the, the sun is on the horizon anyways. And it's actually been, it went from like minus 40 Celsius, which is, I think is like minus 40 Fahrenheit as well to yes. almost plus one of a high today. So it's this weird, like winter is kind of, is still around like where we have many more months of winter up here anyways, two or three for sure. But, um, now the snow is kind of all melting and slushy and dirty. And it's kind of like now it's almost a little bit more depressing, even though the weather's warmer, but this isn't really a weather podcast. Not that I'm wearing that shirt today, but, <laughs> uh, what was the game we played what did you play? For the last uh, we tried few weeks? The, the Enchanted World, um, which uh, is this sort of sliding puzzle game with a, a little bit of a story. Um, I think you see in the first couple of levels, there's you, you seem to be like a witch or sorceress, and your teacher or parent has been turned into a bird that's helping you, and you're trying to just kind of get through the levels. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I, I guess before we dive too, in, too deep into the gameplay itself, but just the visually it's, it's very beautiful to look at. It's, uh, I think we alluded to last yes. episode, it's published by, uh, noodle cake studios here in where I live and in Saskatoon. But I think that the game itself was probably, they, I think they're the publishers of it, but, um, visually it looks amazing and easy to look at lots of fun stuff for the eyes to, to get distracted by. And, and it, cause at its core, like you said, it's a, puzzle game basically but wrapped in and you know kind of like walking from puzzle to puzzle adventure game almost um but uh and as usual i think it'll be the case where you've probably gotten further into the game than i have and um and so my experience will be limited to the first few levels how how, does the gameplay change a lot as you get further into the game yeah, so there's kind of uh, sub-worlds. And as you were doing on the live stream earlier, I think you were kind of in the second one mm. or the third one maybe. You you had gone underground because um, there's sort of the first one with just the basic tutorial and then there's the they introduce the rivers and then you go underground and there's the the sort of bad guys that are blocking your some of your moves. Um, I think what's interesting about puzzle games like this one is you know the core mechanic could have been implemented in grayscale 2d 20 plus years ago right like mm-hmm. er, well i should say more like 30 years 30 <laughs> years ago I'm, I'm not thinking about the fact that it's 2020 you're, you're sliding tiles around and um it reminds me of i don't know if you ever had one of those little plastic uh, sliding tile toys where there'd be a scrambled picture with one square missing and you'd have to rearrange them yeah. to to solve it they're, they're big at like museum stores <laughs> <laughs> yeah totally yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, and it's uh, it's I was I was telling too earlier. It's there's a lot of if you watch Survivor, and I'm sure other shows too, but there's a lot of um, puzzles that the contestants have to do uh, that are sliding puzzles. It's kind of like, but in a big, huge scale, so it looks good on TV. But um, yeah, it's that similar kind of 
mechanic that at work, which which works. I mean, it sounds maybe if that turns you off of the game, I don't think it should. Like if if that unless you hate puzzles, I guess that's there's always a contestant on Survivor who hates puzzles and swears they're bad at puzzles, and then event, inevitably gets promoted to do the puzzle and fails or whatever. But anyways, um, <laughs> nothing to do with Survivor. <laughs> this game has nothing other than it's a puzzle, uh, but it's the mechanics for sliding the things around works i'd say 90 percent of the time and then the odd time you're kind of like pushing one way but it goes a different way and and because it's at least the puzzles i did are kind of like they're on a a chain one way or another you're not just dropping it's not like you're picking up a puzzle piece and dropping it down it's like you have to slide them around uh on the board so to speak in the game to actually make it work in the right order and so you sometimes have to like keep sliding it around in different ways almost like a rubik's cube i guess kind of idea um yeah so. similar i i think I maybe it's just I haven't played enough yet or enough of variety of the levels. I don't think I have uh, an approach that's like, oh, I want to get this tile from this corner to this corner. Here's my sort of consistent looping method, like like how you can learn how to just solve a Rubik's cube. Mm -hmm. um, so that I think meant I was doing a little more kind of trial and error. Um, I would say. I did occasionally, it seemed like I would drag my finger and it wouldn't quite do what I thought it was. So like there's something maybe a little fidgety there in terms of just not not making the correct move, but the game doing what you wanted it to do. I, I ran into that a few times. Um, and in particular, unlike the, the physical puzzle I was talking about, it's not a square grid. Each Each level has kind of a different arrangement. It might have like a long narrow piece or a wide piece where you have to slide tiles around. Um, and to the art uh, that you mentioned, and, and it's, it is this really cool kind of low poly art style that, um, the, the actual puzzle is a pretty small area of the screen. There's, there's a lot of rich background stuff going on, uh, with little animations and environments and tree roots and rivers and, and other things that, that makes the, the visual appeal of the game really high even as you're focusing on just the core puzzle mechanic. Yeah, definitely. And it's it, on the one hand, it feels like you could almost like zoom down. Like once you click into a puzzle, you could zoom in and that could fill a screen. And again, this goes back to like my desire to maybe play some of these on an iPad because that would definitely be nicer visually, I think, and easier to sort of check out what you're actually doing in the puzzle. Because sometimes there is, at least in the one piece, one puzzle I was doing, there's some pieces that are obscuring a little bit of what you're doing. And so you're kind of like, you have to cycle through to make sure you get to the right piece that you want and and things like that. But um, but overall, like that's a very minor complaint, I think. Um, was there any puzzles that got too hard to do? Like the, where you were like Googling uh, <laughs> a solution? Yeah, so I, I got completely stuck. Uh, the, so the sort of, I think the next world after yours is this mechanical world and the, the solution becomes two sided. So you have to line up some gears spinning. So all of the spinning gears have to interconnect from one side of the puzzle to the other, and you have to line up some wires and it's on opposite sides of the tile. And there's a little switch that you can turn to flip between the two sides. So you have to get both, uh, faces of the puzzle lined up. Which means, you know, if you're looking at one side and you make a move that's better on that side, unless you remember exactly which tiles you're moving, it, it can be very difficult. Mm -hmm. I got through two of those. It was very challenging, kind of trial and error. And then the the one I'm currently on, I'm completely stuck. I glanced at a walkthrough, but I think I'm going to have to basically have like it running on another <laughs> screen with my with my phone in front of it to follow along exactly with the video. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. So I, I it did ramp up. The difficulty ramped up a lot. I think. With a little more patience, a little more time, I'd get past that and maybe get into some other mechanics that aren't quite as frustrating or blocking. Right. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. Um, just a, a programming note: if you can, the window behind you does that blind close? Because every if you go out of view, oh, yes. it uh, then you go black or dark anyway, as it overexposes. that'll that'll do it yes the the sky over elliott bay <laughs> I, I couldn't find a room except all the way up on the 33rd floor so oh wow <laughs> so if the podcast sounds a little higher than usual that's why yes <laughs> so would you uh is it something that you'd want to finish you're going to go back to and consistently you know play 
play through or or walk through certain levels and try to get like the achievement to the unlock the uh, <laughs> finished achievement? Yeah, you know, I I usually try to avoid walkthroughs in games, but given that I feel pretty stuck and I I put at least you know 15 or 20 minutes into a couple different iterations on this level, I think I would like to try to get unblocked on this one and keep playing, see where it goes, see what the other worlds are like. That said, if I keep having to consult a walkthrough, I would probably just give up on it because then, <laughs> you know, the it's not it's not fun anymore. I'm not playing the game. I'm just having someone else play the game for me so I can see how it ends. At which point, maybe I would just watch a a playthrough that someone's posted. Right, because <laughs> it is like like you said, like it's a lot of just tapping. There isn't, and even with a controller, if you I don't know, I, I'm guessing a controller works for it, but. A controller would actually probably be quite frustrating on this one. This is one where touchscreen is definitely preferred, I would think. Um, but it is very low. Like it's not that you're you're trying to jump at the right time and timing things or whatever. It's not technically hard to do. It's just yeah, like unlocking the puzzle in the right order and getting the tiles in the right order. That's the difficult part. Right. Um, and I wonder what the like. This goes back to like we've talked about Apple Arcade in general as a premise and the subscription model for games. And obviously we have an extra layer on top of that of uh, doing a podcast about those games where we do feel a bit of pressure to, you know, report back, talk about and potentially finish and, and things like that. Um, if I was left to my own devices and just playing games or not, um, I probably would abandon things. I would feel a little less pressure to <laughs> to play some of these games even with the six dollar a month or whatever subscription hanging over um and in terms of the bank book i, sh- I think because we had a, <laughs> i just realized why i hadn't high why i hadn't been seeing it on our credit card because we actually put a bunch of money into our apple id account or whatever to pay for apple music with one of those costco buy one get one for you know cheaper bunch of gift cards or whatever right and so it actually was pulling out of that slowly um so I, I'm sort of stealing from our Apple Music fund to pay for my Apple Arcade addiction or whatever. But that being said, it still is kind of like a game like this to me is one that I I would visually and and even music too actually is really good too. We didn't touch on on the sound of the game too. It for having no uh, almost no text on the screen. I think like it's the it you know it has the sort of instruction tutorial level walking you through how the game's going to basically work, and then you're kind of thrown into the world with a few every so often there's like a little indicator on the screen as to where you might want to tap to go next right um and so it's very easy to get into i think um i don't know if you tried it with your your son but i hadn't actually tried this one with my kids yet at all so they're still way too hooked on switch to even bother (laughs) (laughs) you know this is one we tried because it was one of the launch games and like i mentioned i think it's one of the demo games at apple stores on ipads he you know, played maybe the first two levels and just it it didn't grab him. Hmm. And I think in general, at his age, the puzzle games are not super exciting. Um, he says he likes you know simulation and maybe more action and and kind of the more toy type games where you're just playing a little more abstractly. Yeah. Um, one thing I wanted to note on the the sort of the Apple Arcade funding point is I noticed something interesting. So we have a family sharing plan all set up uh we and my wife's account is the primary on our on our iCloud family so we loaded those Costco cards that we also did onto her account but I started the Apple Arcade subscription so it comes out of my funding pool so it hit it goes up the family chain but hits her credit card instead of using her saved balance oh interesting I wonder yeah so I don't (laughs) I don't know why it happens that way that it doesn't. But if she charges something on her account, like Apple Music or um, a movie you know or new whatever. purchases, it yeah. hits the stored balance first. Interesting. That's actually a good hack for that because then you know you could do uh, whatever. So whoever's going to trigger that kind of subscription, then you could make sure that that account either does or doesn't have the whichever way you want to do it. I guess. However, it helps you. Th- obviously, it's, in a family, is coming out of the same pot eventually i guess but yes uh, yeah if, you, generally speaking yeah uh and as far as replayability on this one i think uh there i guess there could be a bit uh, but it, it doesn't feel like a game that's going to be necessary to replay i guess and where i um, intentionally go back to unless i was really stuck for something to do it <laughs> i don't know the once the puzzles are figured out you're kind of like good i think to to not go back but how about you 
Yeah, I mean, I, I don't think I would revisit it. I don't think I would remember how to solve a particular puzzle. So so That's revisiting true. it would be kind of a new uh, take on it again. But again, especially with the some of the levels being kind of more frustrating, um, I, I don't see myself revisiting it unless I sort of get past this stuck point and they're really uh, uh, more, more fun and interesting. Yeah. Um, on the levels, I think there's sort of two other things I would add. So one is unlike a lot of the other puzzle games, you either you just beat the level or not, right? There's no like timer or two out of three stars kind of thing like a lot of other puzzle games have. Uh, I would say the one thing that took me out of the game a little bit is the fact that there is a an overworld and levels. Like as you beat each level, it actually pops you out to that and you have to tap over to move to the next level. And I, I feel like it would be a little better if as you as you completed a puzzle and you and the character walks out of that area you just seamlessly go into the next room that contains sliding tiles right yeah that makes sense yeah it kind of pulls you out of the action or out of the immersiveness of it um and again you're playing this bit, on yeah. the ipad or, or your phone um i played it on the ipad when my son and i tried it back at launch okay. for this session i was playing on my phone yeah yeah yeah, so it's it's definitely worth uh, grabbing if you're um, checking out, looking for a game that's like a puzzle game, obviously, and and interested in that kind of thing, and and even just visually playing through it a bit until either you get stuck or frustrated or whatever. Um, the like you had noted, the low poly kind of art look style and very vibrant, bright colors, a little darker, I guess, maybe in at least the some levels that I was in, um, but uh, yeah, very well done, very well designed, I think. And, and for a puzzle game that, you know, even from a developer standpoint, I guess, making sure that it actually is, you can solve it and play test it, I guess, enough that it works. Um, and even if it is frustrating to try and figure out what it is, I think, I think they did a good job of, of doing that. So um, moving on to Kids Corner, you had noted, noted here cooking games, and I'm flashing to uh, fights my family's had playing Overcooked on the Xbox, but uh, is that the kind of game you're thinking well, yeah, so uh, my son is just, he, I think, I think my wife tried one of the iOS, like just sort of speed clicker kind of cooking games where you have to keep up with the customers. And I, I think Overcooked is similar. And he was really interested in that idea. But the way those games are designed is you pretty much can't beat more than the first few levels without paying for the in-app purchases to like upgrade your equipment or um, use the different speed boosts or that kind of thing. Uh, and I, I, we generally have avoided anything that involves consumable in-app purchases just because, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's just, it's not a road we want to go down with slope. him. Yeah. <laughs> Ex exactly. At the same time, it's a, a little frustrating because he's seen the game. It's, it's exciting to him. He wants to play a game like that, but it, it wouldn't actually be fun for him because there's not a game that's just pay a few bucks or on arcade that you can just kind of play at your own pace and ha do the fun of combining the different ingredients. Uh, so, and I know there's a few, there's like overcooked, there's, was it battle, battle Royale kitchen battle? Something, yeah. Like it's on, it was steam a Kickstarter and, and yeah, it's on steam. And, and that's the other thing is there are a couple games that are available on steam. We don't have a console at home right now. Uh, cuisine Royale maybe. I don't know. Yeah. Or yeah. So, battle, and yeah. I think there's like a Gordon Ramsay kitchen simulator <laughs> one or something. Or he just screams at you. It, and, and so some of those look very complicated and difficult, so they wouldn't be appropriate for a six year old. So, yeah, it, it's another one where he is aware of a, a game genre, possibly because we played Game Dev Tycoon together. So he kind of knows <laughs> all the possible genre combinations there are. Uh, and he wants to play it, but there's not one that is like the right combination of simple enough for a kid without the mechanics being tied into a bad business model, right? right. <laughs> and and that's what that's where arcade really gives me hope. So I'm I'm wondering, you know, where are some of these categories of games? And I, I suspect, you know, Apple is not seeking out some of these games. <clears throat> Excuse me. I suspect that Apple is not seeking out some of these games that look or act too much like the sort of shovelware that's on the store for in-app purchase right now. 
Yeah. They they don't want to go. They don't want to arcade to be confused with the the sort of problem business game space they got themselves into with the way the app store works. Yeah, and the like the the perception that those games are basically designed to like like a drug almost to like pull kids in, suck them in, and stay there because obviously for Apple it's not that they want you to just be stuck in one game forever. They just want you to subscribe and. Enjoy the games as you see whenever you want and not be pressured to like exactly. stay, come back every day, those kinds of things. Um, I will say like in, in a bit of a tangent, but um, Overcooked and Overcooked 2 now is out, which I haven't, we haven't tried. Actually, it's, we have a, this is the problem with this premise of the podcast for me. Is we, in addition to the Switch, we also got some sort of promo where Discord gave us three months of Xbox Game Pass, which is essentially their like download a whole bunch of old games and play them whenever you want. It's their subscription model for what, like Apple right. Arcade for Xbox, yeah. essentially. Um, and so there's just like literally thousands probably of games that we could be playing right now. And so convincing anybody to do any one thing, getting the four gamers in our house, my wife isn't as avid a gamer, but getting the four people who want to play games at any one time, in addition to the, like the the litany of, you know, Disney Plus and Netflix and <laughs> library, you know, games, all, all that stuff getting any of us to agree on one thing for any amount of time is is uh, difficult at best. So, But Overcooked 2, Overcooked 1 we played, Overcooked 2 we haven't played, but it was I thought it was a great game and like definitely kid-friendly. And so whatever platform you end up needing, I think it's on Steam, it would you definitely need a controller of some sort. Um, but it's very simple, like graphically, your, your orders come up and you have to like assemble them in a certain order. Someone wants a burger and you need a burger and a lettuce and a cheese and put it on a plate, fry it up, put it on a plate. Like it's a very fun kind of like I could see a five, six, seven year old getting into that. The stress part of it, the fight causing part of it is when you're depending on your sister to get you the lettuce because they're in a different section of the kitchen that you can't get to because that's where the sort of co-op gameplay is fun. And as adults, I can see being great with brothers and sisters at younger age yeah. sometimes not so great <laughs> where they're just like screaming at her like just give me the lettuce or whatever and like and it's like right. starts to resemble what our kitchen looks like in the morning when they're getting their lunches packed and stuff and it's like well that's not really a fun scenario i want to replay over and over <laughs> but this, this is my real life i don't yeah. want to simulate it in a game <laughs> exactly <laughs> but graphically and, and like it's just fun like it's a lot of fun and that's I know I remember hearing about it on the short game uh, podcast where they talked about it and it's exactly that it's like a perfect couch co-op game have some friends over they'll be like what we're gonna play a cooking game and you're like yeah it's fun just trust me and then like an hour later it'll go by and you'll still be playing it because it's just like that much kind of a fun game to play so yeah it'd be neat to have something like that on Apple Arcade that would be similar to that style and whether they brought it overcooked three or whatever, you know, something like that. Um, it's and a touch screen version of it. I'm sure would work very well. Cause that's exactly what you're doing. It's just with a controller, um, moving guys around the kitchen and stuff. So, um, right. But yeah. yeah interesting. I'll have to check that out. I think one thing with the, with the way the arcade subscription works and there's so many games that I haven't even touched yet is that I'm, almost disinclined to spend money on other games and apps because oh, totally. it's like, well, yeah. we have, we've, we're already paying for this. Look at all, you know, look at this huge library we can do. And similarly, you know, my steam library that I've accumulated over the years <laughs> is a uh, hundred plus games. Many of them never played cause I bought them on the steam sale. Yeah. <laughs> and it, of course the problem is in part, there, there's a very narrow set of games that are both content appropriate and difficulty appropriate for a six year old. Yeah. Yeah, and then and Steam de generally not so much there, um, but yeah, Apple Arcade is kind of like the, it should have stuff, and and there is other games that will, I know we can cover that will get to some of that, like, um, but but yeah, it's an interesting kind of overlap where you want to be able to enjoy it with him, and also, but at the same time, be able to leave him to play that probably to go do something else every so often as well. And that yeah. Kind of yes. Uh it, you know, sc screen time while making dinner, say, uh, yeah. is, is something we rely on sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Or recording a podcast while their screen time is going on. That's something I do often. Um, <laughs> so speaking of TVs, and this is a, a bit of a stretch for a tangent, but speaking of Xbox TV, whatever, gaming, we've often talked about on the podcast, waiting for some sort of Apple TV, the device, Apple TV update, hardware update. And no signs, no rumors. The Apple had their earnings call lately, late, last week, I think, or this week, whatever it was. Nothing specific. Not that they announced new products there, but 
nothing forecasted or anything out of that either. Um, and so I don't know when there's an Apple developer conference in June, I guess, again, that would maybe have something about that, but probably not. Uh, it'll probably be just something that drops. So in the meantime, if you wanted to get a current kind of Apple TV experience, we were talking before the show about we both, neither of us have a, a laptop or a computer that's running Catalina, the latest OS for Mac in a reliable sense. <laughs> And apparently the <laughs> Apple Arcade is available if you're on Catalina. At least they were doing that in beta. I haven't heard anything about it post sort of Apple Arcade launch. It's definitely always sort of promoted as a Apple TV and iOS device kind of experience. But um, you were suggesting maybe a Mac Mini update instead. Yeah, well, so I, I don't know why. It seems like an Apple TV controller bundle would be something they would want to do to promote arcade as a service. Like that's the natural fit for a lot of these games. Obviously some of the games are very touch oriented, but my home personal iMac is getting long in the tooth. Uh, and was thinking about, Oh, maybe I, I still want a full home computer. That's not my work issued laptop for photo library, backup home media server kind of things. And I was wondering, oh, maybe instead of having a full computer, since I'm not using it at home to work from home, I would just have a Mac Mini hooked up to the TV. It would run Catalina. It would be a TV-based arcade console. I've heard of other people doing this. So it's something that I was kind of rolling around in the back of my head. Obviously, it would be a lot more expensive than an Apple TV would be, but it would be replacing uh, a full computer. I think the biggest weakness is, you know, many several years ago, uh, Apple had front row for Mac. Mm -hmm. uh, which was sort of a streaming set top box type interface, an app you could bring up that would, that would get you to, you know, your, a couple of your media, mostly your, your, what, what was then iTunes. So that's the biggest downside is, is compared to having like a, a, a fire stick or, or Apple TV box where there's just a remote control you can use easily. I used to have a Mac centered entertainment set up uh, back uh, 10 years ago you know, before before my wife and I met where I had a projector hooked to a Mac and that was how I was watching um, you know TV shows and Star Trek and whatnot on the big screen yeah so yeah I, I think that's I'm kind of waiting for that hardware update but maybe if let's say the the fusion drive in my iMac uh, dies uh, that's I would probably just get a Mac mini and not even think about the Apple TV anymore yeah, well, I think that I haven't tried it yet. The Apple TV app on Mac OS, so again, Catalina, I think it is required for that, probably would function similar. I'd have to, yeah, my, I do have a Mac mini that I have hooked up to my TV. We use it with Plex because our TV is a smart TV, and so it has a Plex app that pulls any shows and things that are, are on our Mac mini. But, uh, but it, the Mac mini is older and doesn't run Catalina, so I can't get Apple Arcade on that. Um, and you're right, like it's a, I don't know what Apple TV is in the States, but it's a 200 and some dollar purchase up here for Apple TV versus whatever it is, 800 plus for Mac mini. Um, and so it's, it's a, obviously quite a bit more for the computer, but, but yeah, it is multi-purpose and, uh, essentially with TVs being what they are these days, it gives you a, another place for a kid to sit with a keyboard and a mouse and do homework, even if you really wanted to. Uh, oh, I suppose. Yeah. So has that purpose, multi-purpose that way. But yeah, the Apple TV, just looking at screenshots even of it, like people are using the Apple TV app on a computer. So then in theory, that would run, you know, if you had a Mosa keyboard in your living room or wherever your Mac mini is, that would give you that option. And and then as well, the Apple Arcade connectivity as well through that. So um, it could work pretty well, kind of like back in the day. I, I too did the front row thing with a Mac mini for as long as I could and, and enjoyed that experience with... Apple stuff, but um, yeah, sad to see it go go the way. I had forgotten about it actually. So, um, but that could work. And uh, I mean, it's definitely the fun. It appeals to the nerd in me of you know devices and computers hooking up to a TV and <laughs> managing that. It's funny because you you mentioned how it was like before you met your wife or as you met you were dating or whatever. <laughs> like those kinds of things do tend to go by the wayside as you like make tw when other people not necessarily just your a spouse but like someone else comes into the picture who like it's complicated and your computer goes down and they just want to watch a stupid movie and because of this complicated setup that you have that you don't mind you know fighting with for 15 minutes just to watch a movie <laughs> if you're not around to fight with it uh suddenly it's not as fun to have around and going to something more simplified is 
the way you usually go. I used to have like a computer in my, when DVDs were first, this is ages me, but DVDs were first a thing. And I had a computer in our like sort of kitchen area with a cable running across the kitchen through the living room to the TV. And that was how you had to play DVDs rather than just buying a DVD player because that was expensive. We played it off our computer DVD drive. And yeah, so if you wanted to pause, you had to run back to the computer, (laughs) hit a button. I digress. <laughs> yeah, I think I had uh, I had set up where my old Mac Pro was in the sort of the office at my desk, and I had a 50 foot VGA cable running like along the baseboard through the kitchen, through the living room to the projector, and I had a wireless mouse. I briefly tried pairing a Wii remote to my computer <laughs> over Bluetooth, and you could kind of control a few things that way. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah, it it's the sort of hardware tinkering that, you know, now we we have the conversation is like, okay, if you got hit by a truck, what <laughs> yeah. in our home can I still operate? Uh, you know, are is is everything in one password? Uh, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, much more important than any sort of will discussion is just actually like, how do I get at <laughs> the Apple How do I get on the Wi-Fi? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. Our photos are on your your phone. I, I need those if you die so that I can make the slideshow. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Morbid, yes. but a reality of yeah. modern technological life. <laughs> All right. For uh, for next episode, uh, thanks for bearing with us through a tangent down memory lane and, <laughs> and funeralisms. Um, for next episode, uh, you had you had played, a, you started, before we started recording, you said you'd played a little bit of Pilgrims and... Uh, which we'd mentioned on the previous episode. I think that'd be a good one. I also want to wondering if we should just claim grindstone as the next episode's uh, game since you've played it. Actually I downloaded it. I actually haven't gotten into it yet. That would be one we could do as well, where you'd be way further ahead than I am obviously in the game, but uh, we could also do that just to keep things um, simple, I guess maybe. So I'm good. Uh, either way. Yeah. You, in terms you make of the uh, homework, that makes my life uh, a little easier <laughs> since I've played it already and have opinions on how the levels work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think let's do that. Let's do grindstone because then we we can have a deeper discussion about it too. Having you having put in a few more minutes, anyways, into the game or maybe hours, <laughs> as the case may be. So grindstone Definitely is on uh, the hour range. Give uh, give folks a quick overview of what grindstone is. What kind of game? So grindstone is a you know, color matching on a grid kind of game. It's it's not a match three, which is a very popular genre, you know, like your Bejeweled and Candy Crush, but you're, they're, they're, you're a warrior traveling up a mountain on a quest, and there's a bunch of little critters in your way, and you have to chain through them by slashing them with your sword, and the chains are colors, and then you can go through certain items or wild cards to change colors as you go and each level has its own exit condition that you have to meet as well as bonus items you can collect and the thing i really like about it is it's not real time you can set up your chain take as much time as you want for each move Mm. and build sort of an optimal combo and then say go and the character will slash through and um yeah there's and we can dive into that more next episode all the different ins and outs of the different levels and and they kind of come in sets of 15 levels where there's a different mechanic every 15 levels right cool yeah i'm looking forward to trying it out and uh yeah if you're interested at all in some of these games that we're playing obviously you can follow along on uh on the show notes we'll have a link to the the game to download if you're an apple arcade subscription member i guess or whatever if you're a subscriber already um goodstuff.fm slash 25c and then this is actually episode seven so goodstuff.fm slash 25c slash seven is where you can find links to what we've discussed and also we do stream this live like we alluded to on our twitch channel twitch.tv slash gsfm if you want to subscribe there and be notified when we go live generally try to be thursday friday uh, our schedules permitting and uh that's just yeah just depending on availability of of rooms and time for us to record but uh, we'd love to have you join us when we record so um if you're also if you're a twitter person i'm i chris on twitter i guess we do this in our sign off here why don't we just do that <laughs> sure i have like i just had a client i i had a podcast for a living in case you're not aware out there but i had a client who messaged me like you forgot this part of my episode that i 
we do every week. And like, I think I'm, I've reached peak podcast where I have so many different shows in my head that I have to try and remember what format they're in <laughs> that some are starting to fall out of my brain. So, um, anyways, uh, thanks for listening. You'll to start tw- editing the music. Oh, sorry. No, that's okay. <laughs> I'll start. Yeah. They'll, if, if ever 25 cents has like some other shows music on it, you know, it's just Chris has reached the point where he's overloaded and needs to take a break or something. <laughs> Thank you for listening to 25 Cents, an Apple Arcade podcast. You can find me on Twitter at iChris. You can find me on Twitter and most everywhere else as UltraNerd. That's N-U-R-D. And you can find 25 Cents wherever you listen to podcasts and, of course, at goodstuff.fm on the web. Be sure to check out our Patreon. Patreon.com slash goodstuff is where you can support the whole network of podcasts that we do at Good Stuff, including the recently launched uh, Midnight Snack. Kyle and Kenny, brothers, two brothers, talking food and late at night, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. It's the, that's the official, that's not the official description, but that's what we'll go with for today. And, uh, and you get access to our discord and there's a Minecraft server that we run as well for members and, uh, all that good stuff. <laughs> Thanks for listening. Have a great day. <laughs> Bye. Thanks. Bye. Oh, and I think, did I do it again? (laughs) I, uh, I realized I had it muted on the, because I muted the system audio, which I thought was like the rest of the audio, but it actually is also where Farrakko's soundboard Ah. audio is getting sent to the stream, so nobody could hear that. Someday I'll get it figured out. (laughs) Yeah. La la la. All right, I'm going to stop recording on my end. Yes. Um, I would say any of the tangent, if you want to get the show linked down, we can we can cut all that out if, if uh, the Apple TV Mac Mini Entertainment Center reminiscence is too long. Yeah, I was thinking that whether, I'll see how long, I, like I have about 30 some, I forgot to see where it was, but 30 some, 36 minutes total recording. So it's actually, wouldn't be too bad, but yeah, we can definitely... If it if it works to quickly chop that out, I might just do that. But if not, it's it's okay to have some character yes. in the show that way. But, um, all right, cool. I'm gonna run for lunch, and uh, all right. If you want to, if you're able to quickly flip it over onto Drive or Dropbox, I forget what we use. That's the other thing I keep. Yeah, I'll I'll, <laughs> I'll drop it in Dropbox uh, in a moment here. Yeah, I, I won't it's be doing it. I'm in I'm in an intense. Uh, project phase so it's been uh, a lot more meetings than usual have mm. been keeping my schedule full 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 yeah no worries I understand that and all uh, all w- one or two of our listeners viewers live stream viewers will understand the, <laughs> the erraticness of the schedule all right I'll let you go I'm right, turn cool. off the stream and, and-